Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! What's up, After Buzzers? Welcome to the Survivor After Show. I'm your host, Jeff Thurm. Uh, as you can see, joining me in studio today is nobody else. Uh, Nando and James couldn't make it tonight, so I'm here all alone. Uh, but we'll be talking all things Survivor Season 30, Episode 11, titled Survivor Russian Roulette. Um, what an episode. Uh, tonight was, was pretty crazy. Um, let's just uh, quickly start out by uh, recapping kind of what happened last week um, with White, uh, Mike winning the immunity challenge um, and Will saying some pretty hurtful things to Sharin that um, I was really, really offended by and I know you guys were too. A lot of people, uh, it might be my most retweeted or favorited tweet in history, if not at least in recent history, um, my uh, personal feelings towards Will. Um, I was pretty bummed that he didn't go home, to be honest. I wasn't here last week to talk about it. Um, I thought maybe the attacks, people would, uh, would take him out, but they did not. Instead, Jen was sent home um, to join her lover, Joe, in the jury house, um, which, you know, uh, you know, based on social media, I think they are together still. So um, she looked pretty stoked on that. But getting into tonight's episode, um, we have some more kind of weird conversations going on. Um, people this season are pretty offensive uh, and it's pretty shocking and I see a lot of you guys on Twitter kind of um, in shock about some of the things some people saying um, so we'll just kind of dive right into it um, Dan and Sharin are talking and and Dan is trying to you know tell Sharin how bad he feels about the will situation but then in the interview he is calling her, you know, saying how she likes to be the victim and she's victimizing herself and calls what happened to her karma. Like, that's so insulting and ridiculous and just Dan being Dan. It's really interesting. Later in the episode, Mike um, says that he's shocked that Dan kind of isn't the person he, saw, he thought he was, um, which uh, it, it's interesting what we see and what each of them, what each person on the island must see and not see what happens behind their back. So um, I'm wondering if, um, you know, Mike watching it now sees that Dan really was the person that, you know, he ended up to be. Um, so I was pretty shocked by Dan's comments there. Uh, and then just trying to feel bad for Sharin, but then saying those things about her, I just thought it was rude. But going on, uh, then we get to the reward challenge. And the reward challenge is kind of like those old games. I used to play this. Um, something like this in like elementary school, I think, where you have to get across to the other side, but you have to like take the carpet and like jump across to it. Um, but so it was, they had to get across the, the sand and they have these barrels and planks of wood. Um, and again, they do the schoolyard pick in order to find out who the teams are going to be. Uh, we talked about it in a few, ep a few episodes ago that kind of wish we got to see the schoolyard pick to see who picks who and why and you know who the captains are. Um, so, again, I was hoping we'd see it. I knew we wouldn't. So our teams end up being Tyler, Dan, Will, and Carolyn, uh, and then Mike, Sierra, Rodney, and Sharin. And both teams have very different strategies. At first, Mike is, you know, leading the blue team by, like, sprawling out and doing this, like, awkward barrel belly flop thing, but it's actually working for, working for him at first. Um, which just looked ridiculous, but you could tell that he was going to get pretty tired um, pretty fast. And I was, I was surprised to see that the rest of his team could actually fit on one barrel. So I wasn't sure how long that plane was going to last, but they did pretty well for a little bit. Um, Tyler and Carolyn are leading Dan and Will, who I am not fans of. So they're being carried. Um, and they are much more steady, go much slower, 
and um, you know, obviously we see that their plan wins. Uh, but uh, it was pretty funny to see, you know, the other team strategy with Mike almost doing the splits halfway through, and then um, and then Sierra trying to lead them and doing the barrel roll, like all them going just like Donkey Kong style. It was a pretty. It was pretty entertaining, um, but it ended up being that they lost. Um, so Tyler, uh, Dan, Will, and Carolyn win reward. Um, and I think the only reason Dan stayed in this challenge so long, or was so successful, was that he loves burgers. And he made that very, very clear, saying, I love cheeseburgers. Um, he was so stoked to win that, that cheeseburger, um, which was was hilarious, but the, those burgers did look really, really good when they were eating them, so I get that. Um, so then Dan claims to feel bad for Rodney since Rodney's never won anything, and he actually has the opportunity to switch out to give Rodney the reward. Rodney kind of says, like, it's okay, he wants to get it on his own, um, which you can tell, I think in Dan's head, he was like, I might have to do this because I might actually... Like, I might have to do this so that he doesn't hate me, but Rodney bowed out of that option, and uh, it wasn't necessary. And now, obviously, when the two teams are split up, the winning team on the boat and the losing team back at camp, this is when, you know, the scheming conversations happen. And Sierra brings up the really, really, really good point to Rodney that Tyler is about to win this game. You know, we're still eight people, and she's already claiming that she's pretty certain that Tyler's going to win the million dollars and that now's the time to make the move. Um, and Rodney listens. Um, he's interested, but he's not that, you know, into it, it doesn't seem. Um, and then he says in an interview that he's a little afraid that this might be a little bit of a mic situation. Um, people kind of freaking out and changing the plan. Um, but I thought it was really, really smart of Sierra to bring it up and... Um, you know, a lot of people in this episode realize that now this could be the time to get rid of Tyler. Um, and we will talk about what actually happens in a little bit. Uh, and then on the boat, um, uh, Tyler and Dan, Dan's just blabbing away about how safe he is and, and how it's time to get Mike out and uh, very, very anti-Mike. And Tyler's just like going along with it because he's a great player, but uh, Tyler is also then saying in an interview that, you know, Dan shouldn't be so certain. And all these people are really just focused on the top six, like making it to the top six, and no one's really focused on what's going to happen after. Tyler brings that up. He's like, I like that you're just focused on the top six. Let's just keep it at that and don't think any further because that's all you need to be. Um, so then we get to the immunity challenge uh, where they have to hold the rope that's 20, that is attached to a bag that's 25% of their body weight from when they started. Um, and then Jeff drops the bomb that it's going to be, that there are going to be two winners, two winners of immunity. So pretty interesting. It definitely, you know, shook things up because, uh, you know, everyone was kind of having their plan on who was going to go home. And then, you know, this idea that two people are actually going to be safe this time, definitely, you know, think through a wrench. But uh, it, it was an interesting little surprise. Um, so they all start to do the challenge and Jeff, Jeff has the greatest comments when he is just like, you guys are going to feel this. You're going to get hurt. You're going to feel it in your back and you're going to feel it in your forearms and your hands are going to start to bleed and your skin's going to come off. And he's just like, the last thing that you want to hear when you're in all of that pain is how much more pain is about to come. Um, and <laughs> Jeff just has like, Jeff just has such a great job where he just makes people feel worse about what they're going through. Um, and it's just, it's so funny to see him just like, like I would just, it would be so hard to tune him out. And I feel like he could just get in your head so much. Um, so challenge is going, uh, Sierra's out, then Tyler, then Will, then Dan, then Sharin, um, meaning that Carolyn wins immunity. Uh, which she's stoked on. She's got a huge smile on her face. Uh, I loved, I loved that. She was like, seemed really grateful to win. Um, and then we see the battle between Rodney and Mike uh, for the guys. 
and it was really intense. Dan is, you know, pumping Rodney up, like, you got this, you got this. Um, which, like I just said about Jeff, I, I almost think, you know, was partially annoying, but at the same time, Rodney did stay in for a, a long time with very little rope left. And Mike had like, it was like still like three rounds of rope left. So um, Mike stayed in strong um, and won the immunity and he kind of needed it. I mean, he had a target on his back. Um, people were, you know, planning on getting, uh, some people may have been planning on voting for him, but he was safe. Uh, it was funny how close Sharan was. They, you know, both Sharan and Mike had, had been, had gotten immunity. Uh, everything would have changed because, you know, the six would have had to turn on themselves, but they didn't. So Shireen doesn't have immunity, and now it's her time to scramble. Shireen's a very, very smart person. Whether or not she's a smart player, I'm not sure, but she's a very smart person. She's very aware, and she knows the game. So Shireen now knows she's on the bottom. She's the easiest vote. She's going home, but also knows that she shouldn't be the one going home. So she's trying to tell everyone that she's not a threat, which is so true. And everyone says it. Everyone has said so many times in this episode, like, we should keep Sharin. We should get rid of Tyler. Sharin is not a threat. You want Sharin next to you at the, at the in the finals. Like, no one's going to vote for Sharin. She can't win an immunity. And everyone's just talking all this crap on, on Sharin and how bad of a, a player she is and how no one likes her. So you should take her uh, to the end. And Sharin just is pitching that herself. She's like, bring me to the end. I'm not going to win. So it was. it's shocking to see, you know, shocking and predictable to see what happens, you know, a little bit later. But it's really, really, all these conversations are, are interesting. Um, and then we get to Tyler being very curious about what is in Dan's bag. Um, and I thought this was a very bold move, but I really respect it because Dan won a challenge, uh, or won, you know, a secret, um, a secret prize that was going to help him in, uh, it, with immunity. Um, sorry, I'm stumbling on my words about what exactly it was called, but, and no one knows what it is. So Dan goes snooping, or sorry, Tyler goes snooping, and he finds out that Dan has an extra vote. And this is when Tyler starts to realize Dan can use that extra vote against him if he's able to convince Sierra and Sharin to flip on the strong six. So Tyler is kind of, you know, doing some scheming in his own head. Um, Dan and Mike are talking about, you know, the scramble that they need to do. Um, and Dan, this is when Mike says that Dan was his closest ally, but he messed it all up. Um, and it was very interesting to hear Dan, sorry, to hear Mike say that he messed up his, his uh, alliance with Dan, because it was also interesting earlier, Mike had said in the, in the barrels, he was like, I was just doing all the work and no one did any help and they just stood there. But then he admits he was the one that, you know, because he took the lead on that, he was the fault for them losing. Um, so Mike knows that he's got a target on his back. Mike is not a part of the seven strong anymore. Now it's a six strong with him on the outs. And um, he's got to, you know, He's got to make some moves and figure out what to do, which is exactly what happens um, in an awesome, epic tribal council. Um, we, the tribal council was so, such a roller coaster with everything that happened um, from Sharin's conversations about Will to Dan chiming in. So let's just, that's, we're at tribal council. And Dan is saying to Sharin that, or to Jeff, that he was adopted, so he knows exactly what Sharin went through with her abuse. Doesn't make any sense at all. Um, I don't know where Dan thinks that he can relate to Sharin. Uh, and Sharin brings up the really good point that no one is telling Will to apologize, and no one is even like really feeling bad for what he said. And he said some really terrible things. I mean, to bring up the abuse that she had um, in her household growing up and then, you know, using that against her, it's just so disgusting. And everyone else is just as disgusting for not speaking up or saying anything. Um, 
I get that it's a game, but I think there's, you know, certain ways to play the game, and I don't know if it has to get that personal. And then I don't know if making a, uh, I don't know, Dan saying that he was adopted, being like, I know what she's going through. It's just ridiculous. So, Shirin is, you know, talking about it, and then she's like, let's just cut straight to the chase. You know, she's she's smart. Like, there's no need to dabble around around this. Let's just go straight to it. Points out Tyler. She goes, I know that every single person here is about to make the dumbest decision ever and vote for me. What they really should be doing is voting for Tyler. Tyler has won these challenges. Tyler is going to win the million dollars. Now is the time to get rid of Tyler. She's making up, bringing up a really good point, and you're starting to see some people think um, and some brains churn, and I'm really, really stoked that something awesome could happen at this tribal council um and dan calls mike and shrin desperate and that we're going to find out what how the desperate people vote and carolyn speaks up and says that you know yes moves and timing are are everything but you have to be smart about when you make those moves um so it was a pretty intense tribal um and then just as Jeff says, you know, does anyone have any last words? Mike says that he is going to give Sharin his immunity idol. And in doing so, Sharin's going to vote for Tyler. Mike is going to vote for one of the four others. And now we're going to see where these alliances that everyone is so certain of are going to lay. I thought this was so interesting and so smart to see what was going to happen and I loved Jeff calling it survive a Russian roulette I mean exactly what it was um, and it was really I wasn't sure which way it was going to go um, you know they did the votes and we got down to seeing what was going to happen uh, with this idol and I had a pretty strong feeling that Mike was not actually going to give to Sharin um, because of the way he acted um, in the auction. Um, so when he, you know, backed out and said he wasn't going to do it, I, I had a, a knew in my heart that he probably was not going to do, give Sharin the idol like he said he was going to. But it was still really interesting to see that some of the splits did in fact get, uh, did in fact get split up. Um, so we see... Um, one vote go to Tyler, one vote go to Sharin, one vote go to Dan, another vote go to Tyler, another vote go to Sharin, another vote go to Dan, and so pretty even, and then we see two more go to Sharin, uh, and then she is the next person voted out, um, which, not surprising, but again, like, I'm so, I'm ready for someone to make some moves, I mean, with Jen and Joe and Haley before, it was just everything was everything's been so like predictable. And while you still are on the edge of your seat, not sure what's going to happen, who's going to go home, I'm just ready for someone to make some moves. And I like that Mike, you know, attempted it. Uh, and I, you know, Sharin, you know, was was totally okay with it. Um, she appreciated what Mike did, and she totally understood it. And she even said something like. She knew, she thought it would be dumb for him to play it. Um, but while it, the vote didn't send anyone off, there was a shakeup. And it's really going to be interesting to see now that the strong six, two of them turned on Dan. Um, the strong six isn't the strong six, and it's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens. Um, so then we see that um, the votes, the people that voted for Tyler were Mike and Sharin. The people that voted for Dan were Tyler and Carolyn. Sorry, Tyler and Will. Uh, and then Dan, Rodney, Sierra, and Carolyn were the ones who voted for Sharin, which I find very interesting. Sierra's the one, all episode, talking about how Tyler is the one that needs to go, and yet she votes for Sierra. Sorry, she votes for Sharin. If she had voted for Tyler, it would have been even. Um, and it would have been really, really interesting. I like. I wonder what in her mind didn't have her vote for Tyler when she could have. Um, and I guess maybe it's fear 
of um, everyone else. I'm not really quite sure, but that was that was kind of shocking to me. I thought I thought Sierra at least would have voted for Shireen, um, but Shireen then voted out. She um, is so excited for Jeff to say uh, you've been eliminated, um, and the tribe has spoken um, in her own Survivor fandom craziness. Uh, so. That was the episode, and now we will get into predictions. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. So I like that Nando does this every episode where he says, if you don't watch uh, the, the next episode uh, teaser, now's the time to kind of tune out for a little bit. Um, so there are no spoilers for those that like to... Um, you know, not know what's going to happen next week. But we do see that Tyler and Dan have a little, a little bit of a blow up. Uh, Dan is pretty pissed that people put his name, uh, rightfully so. But uh, obviously Tyler is going to put someone else. Obviously Tyler already knows he's going to be the one on the chopping block. So I don't think that he's the right person for Dan to be getting mad at. But, you know, obviously it's just a teaser, so we're not really sure what happens. The six, it's looking like they're about to crumble because of this, which is exactly what Mike wanted. He did a great job there, uh, and it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, where the true alliances are, and all of them are about to find out, you know, who's being real and, you know, who's being fake. Rodney is pitching that he wants to go home, um, and that he wants to be the next member of the jury, I'm not really sure what his thoughts are there. Maybe he's just talking, you know, Jen said it. I don't know, maybe the game just gets to you. Maybe he's just pissed he can't win. He's never won any of the rewards. So he's pitching that he wants to be the one to go. I have a feeling that's not actually going to happen. I um, am kind of seeing this, this Dan situation blow up. I think Dan's going to go a little crazy. And... Um, I'm going to assume that Dan and Mike are going to be the targets for everybody, and Mike is going to play his... Mike's not going to win immunity, but he's going to play his idol in next week's um, Tribal Council, and hopefully Dan will have blown up and pissed everyone off and gone all crazy that he will be the one to go next. So uh, my prediction for next week is that Dan is going to be the one sent home based off of his craziness. Um, Pretty quick recap for you guys. I guess that's kind of what happens when uh, I'm the only one here. Hopefully next week there will be more of us. Um, as always, make sure that you are uh, following me on Twitter, at Jeff underscore Therm. Same on Instagram. You're following AfterBuzz TV on Twitter. Um, you're watching us live. You're leaving your comments on YouTube. Uh, you can you know give us ratings on iTunes. Let us know if you're listening. Tweet at us using the hashtag uh, ABTVSurvivor. Um, and you know, let us know your thoughts, and we will see you next week. I'm Jeff Thurm. See you guys next week. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.